Father, we thank you for another opportunity we have to lift up our voices to you to pray. Eternal Rock of Ages, we ask that you please come manifest yourself on the behalf of every family here represented. Amen. We ask, Lord, that you please anoint our ears and our eyes that we may hear your voice and your voice alone. Amen. And that we may see that which you have for us to see. Amen. Father, at this junction, we pray for the strength of the Holy Spirit Amen. to come upon every brother, every sister, every man, every woman, because we cannot on our own pray as we ought to. The word says, likewise, the Spirit helpeth our infirmity. Sweet Spirit of God, we ask that you please take over. Amen. Exchange our weakness for your strength. Amen. Lord, prayer is necessary, but many people are weak. I pray, let strength to pray come upon us. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let the truth that you're about to unfold to us about the mystery of the secret place. My Father, let it come with a revelation that we can assimilate. Amen. Holy Spirit, I pray, expand this word in our hearts. Amen. Be a witness to this truth I'm about to share. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. While we are standing, I'd like you to please read Psalm 91. We we'll read from verse 1 through verse number 10. We shall read responsively while we are standing. The book of Psalm number 91, chapter 91. Are you there? If you are there, say I am there. Right, I take verse 1, you take verse 2, we get to verse 10, and we stop. Want to go? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Verse 3, surely... He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day. Verse 6. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the law, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Verse 10 together, there shall no evil before thee, Neither shall any plague come nigh that dwelling. Praise the Lord. 
It continues on to verse number 16. But what I want us to pick, we have seen it from verse 1 and verse 9. Shall we now take verse 1 and verse 9 together before we take our seat? Ye that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse number 9. Because... Even the most high thy word, because you have made the Lord thy God, thy refuge, which is the most high, your habitation. May the Lord anoint his word, and may the Almighty God accomplish this word with fire in your heart. In Jesus' awesome name we are praying. Take your seats before we pray. Hallelujah. Still in the month of working in the miraculous, I still have to bring to you some of those ingredients required for you and I to walk and operate and enjoy perpetually the miraculous. I did mention to you on Tuesday that we are chosen for the miraculous. Fortunately, I couldn't finish that message, but I'm going to continue finish it on Sunday. All right? Now, for this prayer tonight, I want to charge you on the secret place of the Most High. The power and the blessing of the secret place of the Most High. The power, or you can put it, the blessing of the secret place. Can you say it loud and clear? Say the power and the blessing of the secret place. Come on, say it loud and clear. Say the power and the blessing of the secret place. Come on, say it loud and clear. Say the power and the blessing of the secret place. Hallelujah. Psalm 136, verse number 4. 7 to verse number 12. Psalm 136. Psalm 136. To him that made great lies. Shall we read? Did I say 36? Oh, sorry. 139. 139, sorry, verse 7 beginning. Want to go. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? Verse 8. If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Verse number 9. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, in other words, if I take travel abroad, are you hearing me? Uh -huh. Then, what else? Even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Verse 11, if I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Verse 12, together with a loud voice now. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. What is saying that? God does not know darkness. Are you listening to me? No one can hide from God. Praise the Lord. The truth of the matter is that a lot is happening all around in homes, families, business centers, and places of work, even in the life of many Christians. Are you hearing me? And a lot of us trying to fix it with our head knowledge. Sometimes we get carried away, especially what is happening in the life of our unbelieving friends. Unbelieving friends are even doing well and doing better. What is my problem? Me, that I'm not serving God, I'm fasting and praying. How come it's my own life like this? Before you sing with your mouth, you better listen to this message. Praise God. Hallelujah. There is a place called the secret place. 
And it is a meeting place between God and you. That is your ruling empire. That is where you control things that happen around you. You may not be able to control what happens in other person's life, but you can control that which happens to your own life. Listen to me. God is everywhere, but he does not speak to everybody everywhere. God is a God of the secret place. God likes to hide himself. If you look at the book of Job, chapter 23, beginning from verse number 8, Job 23, God likes to hide himself. But why will he hide himself from his so-called people that is claimed that he loves so much? Is that not a puzzle for you? I sat down and meditated and asked questions upon questions. Why will God, who claimed to love me so much, be still be hiding from me? Especially when I'm in a dire need. Many times we come to a crossroads. Sometimes some things go happens in our life that we lack explanation for tried all kinds of things you need to do and you wonder why things still grow worse. Yet, you hear that gentle word or you stumble on your Bible and you still read, he loves you so much. And you, the question is that why is it that you cry and call upon him? He seems to be far away. Let's hear from Job. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there. I'm backward. I cannot even perceive him. Verse number 9. On the left hand, where he does walk, they say he's doing miracle in this place. I went there. He's not there. But I cannot behold him. He hided himself on the right arm that I cannot see him. Verse number 10. My verse number 10. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he has tried me, I shall comfort as gold. My own question to God when I meditated on this passage because I keep you know, try to ask some questions these days that are very, really mind-boggling. That why will God, who claimed to love me so much, still hide when I need Him most? You know, sometimes you put yourself on fasting, you put yourself on prayer, you put yourself on so many spiritual exercises, and that it's like it's just like a mirage. And to make matter worse, you now look probably get news from your unbelieving friend, and they just come, come. come they come bombarding you with testimonies of, you know, the stories of how they have, their business is flourishing, their marriage is working, and everything is working. But I, for God's sake, these people don't even serve God the way I do. They don't even fast. They don't even pray. Some don't even come to church. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Then the Holy Spirit opened my eyes. He said, son, you have preached it before again and again. Go to Psalm 73. You find the answer to that there. But here, we're talking about the ruling empire of the believer. Listen to me. The secret place is a place you can't trade. We saw it there. Verse number one clearly stated. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, he said, I will say of my God is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. He said, he will deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Do you understand? He will cover me with his feather and under his wings will I trust. Do you understand? So look at all those promises that follow. Even if you walk, you see, you will not be afraid of the terror of a night, or the arrow that flies by day, or the pestilence that walks in darkness, or the destruction that wastes at the noonday. Only with your eye you will see and behold the reward of the wicked, for none of these shall come near you. Do you understand? All of these promises are there. You will tread upon serpent, you tread upon hard and young lion, and none of them shall hurt you. He said he will give his angels charge over thee. They will keep you in all your ways so that you will not dash your feet against the stone. All of these promises are there. But it's not for everybody. It's for those who dwell in the secret place. That first statement hankers all. That first statement qualifies you for all. That first verse qualifies you for all. He that dwelleth, dwelleth, say dwell. Say dwell. Listen to me. He didn't say he who comes to visit the secret place. He didn't say he who comes to talk about the secret place. He didn't say he who comes to just, you know, read about secret place. He didn't say who will just come maybe occasionally to visit secret place. As a matter of fact, secret place is not even the church. Are you hearing me? Secret place God is talking about here is not the church. You see, we have so many, um, so many Christians that want things on the platter of gold without taking responsibility. And we have seen it clamping down on us because we are not used to it over the years. So when pressure of the last end starts showing up, you are seeing it in the life of people. 
compromising very easily. Because over the years, we have not really built up our personal relationship with God. Listen to me. If anybody tells you that this generation will get better, they are prophesying lies to you. The only person that will enjoy the better part of it are those who know God one on one. You read it in Malachi that the head will burn like an oven. Chapter 4, verse 1. He said, but that burning like an oven is targeted at some group of people. He said, the proud and the wicked, those who will not seek after God. In verse 2, he now said, but unto you that fear the name of the Lord shall the son of righteousness arise for with healings in his wings. Now, what is he talking about? There are a set of people that will begin to operate in wonders. You wonder why the fiery furnace cannot consume them. Some tension is building up in the nation worldwide, not even not Nigeria alone, that listen to me, except you know God one on one, fairy furnace fire will consume some people. It's already doing it. I'm telling you that it's a place you call the secret place that God is inviting you and I to. Praise the Lord. This is just to incite you, it's to bite your, your spirit. This message is to jab you, to give you a jolt so that you can stand up and pray. Don't just end it here. Are you hearing me? Everyone must begin to take their personal prayer life very serious. Until you begin to know God personally, exploits will remain a virat. In Daniel chapter 11 verse 32, we're told that only those who do know their God. They are those that are qualified for exploit. Is somebody hearing me? Now, is it he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High? shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Listen to me. The shadow of Peter, who is a mortal man, cast out devils. The shadow of Peter alone, you can imagine what the shadow of God Almighty would do for you when you are under his shadow in the secret place. If the shadow of Peter walking past sick people, sickness and disease, infirmity were living, you can imagine what we are missing. Why? Because we do not we do not separate, we do not recognize the secret place that God has many years for ordained for the believers. Everybody wants uncle, wants brothers, wants sisters to fix things for them. Let me tell you something. Everyone, no matter how close to you, is a, is a potential person to disappoint you. Are you listening to me? No matter how close your husband or your wife or your friend do, as long as he's Flesh and blood runs in him. Water and blood runs in that person. That person is a potential instrument to disappoint you. That is why he said in the book of Isaiah, chapter 2, verse 22, he says, Cease from man whose breath is in his nostril. Does this mean that I should not trust people? No, God didn't say that. What God is trying to do is that, look, let nobody take my place in your life. Unfortunately, people have taken the place of God in the hearts of so many people. And that is the reason why we are seeing no relevance for secret place anymore. This generation will rather go and bribe than to seek the face of God. This generation will rather go and play than to pray. This generation will rather go and gossip and talk about things that are mundane, things that will not even have to them, than to sit and open their Bible and now confess the word of God, prove God, bring God to his word, remind him of his word. Are you hearing me? We want things to just happen to us just like a magic without paying a price. Sir, my dear sons and daughters, it doesn't work that way. The kind of training you receive from here, if you follow it, I am telling you, by the time Jesus comes, you'll be standing bold and strong. Are you listening to me? It's not the kind of teaching that many people will like. This pastor is always talking about prayer, prayer, prayer. He's always talking about knowing God, knowing God, knowing God. Listen to me, I can't give you what I don't experience. The little work I have with God, I have seen the power and the, I've enjoyed little grace from the little from the secret place. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm privileged to pray. I was privileged to pray for somebody. I was praying. I was in my room about a few days ago, about four or five days ago. Late in the night, and I got a call. Unlike me. I don't, like, I don't like picking call when I'm in God's presence. But it was impressed on my spirit to pick that call. It was impressed on my spirit to pick the call. Ah, so I paused. I picked that call. It wasn't a church member. I, look, I looked at the name. I have the name. It wasn't a church member. 
was a member of another church, but in the course of my ministrations, she got blessed, and ever since we've been like following up. She comes here occasionally for a program. So I picked the call. My sister, hello. And she started all kinds of, you know, lamenting out. What hit me there is that she has no job. And yet she has a visa about to expire. If she doesn't use this, this is what happened. This is what will happen. I don't know how that visa issue is. It's just said that I have a visa that must expire of so and so day. Ah. What do you want me to do? He said, I believe in your anointing. That provokes something inside of me. He said, I believe in your anointing. You know, there is a way you just provoke the anointing of a servant of God. He said, I believe in your anointing. So I call. See, and go, have I known? For such as I have, I give unto you. I said, are you alone in that place? He said, kneel down. And I was praying. I said, before Sunday, you will see, sir, that a servant of God has prayed for you. I said, okay, amen, I pray. He said, he doesn't know how he's going to do it, but he doesn't want to, this visa to expire. And if she's going to use it, that means she must travel on Sunday. I said, no, it's going to happen. Even if that you're praying, I only pray with you. I pray for you because I have faith. I don't know how God is going to do it. What moved me to pray is that he said a word. I believe in your anointing. The last time you came to our church, I dragged myself because I was having sickness. I visited hospital. It was in that VG, that sickness disappeared. <laughs> okay, I said, God will still do it again. She came around yesterday after we finished breakthrough hour. Ah, my sister, how are you? Meet me in the office after we finish. She was there. And she was telling me, I said, I was expecting to hear something has happened. Do you understand? She started with the, how this one, you know, doesn't like how this one doesn't like. I said, stop. Because I've read in the book of Isaiah, stop pointing fingers. As long as you don't give up accusation, you will miss God. Stop pointing. The Bible says you should stop the pointing of fingers because some of you don't know that these things really affect your prayers. What has happened, my sister? He said, you cannot believe it, that she's traveling on Sunday. How did it happen? That two people, somebody just called. I have a BHA ticket and I'm not ready to travel. And you have this, it doesn't have money. Okay, I'm going to raise half of it. Another person called from the east. Within two people, between few, was it Monday or Tuesday she called? And yesterday she came. So on, on Sunday she's traveling. Now, where I'm going exactly is this. I was praying when she called. I'm trying to open up the power of the secret place. I didn't want to pick it if I want to follow protocol, human policy. Are you following? But the Holy Spirit, who knew how desperate she was for a need, impressed upon me, stop, pick that call. So don't now say that you can call pastor anyhow. If you call, I may not pick your own call. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The Holy Spirit may not tell me to stop when you, when you call, do you understand? But one thing you do know is that if I see a missed call, I would certainly return your call. You understand? So if I am praying and you probably see that I've not, your, the phone is ringing again and again, I, don't pick, I, don't, I didn't pick. Please relax. Do you understand? Don't get fused up. Don't get confused. Don't say, ah, this man doesn't want to pick my call. And he's seen it. Oh, there you. Oh, there you. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. So, hallelujah. Now, me, I'm going exactly. That is the power of the secret place. Now, what exactly do you enjoy when you come to the secret place? You see, the secret place is a place of brokenness. What do I mean by that? You see, when God wants to test the humility in a person, it is how you submit quickly to prayer. <laughs> when God wants to test the humility of a person, it is how you embrace. Because the meaning of coming to the secret place is that, Lord, I am helpless. Lord, I am weak. Lord, I don't know how to handle it. 
Lord, I need help. That is the mystery of the secret place. Because a lot of people do not know that some of these things, rising up left and right against you, clamping down on you, trying to make you live a frustrated life, is a drive to come to the secret place. It's a pressure to push you to the presence of your maker who can fix things. Using your edge knowledge can make that edge to burst. You ha can't undo it. You have not asked people say, look, in fact, what I'm going through now is driving me crazy. It shouldn't drive you crazy. It doesn't matter how many times you use your brain to decipher spiritual experience around you. You can't fix it. It's beyond you. And that is why God has deliberately planted some things around us and ensure it will force us to his presence. So coming back to my questions, why will God, who claimed to love me so much, hide himself from me? Are you listening to me? You remember that I did I'm not making sense to somebody. You see, many of you don't know. David says something. Psalm 119, verse 19. He said, I'm a stranger in the earth. Oh Lord, hide not your commandment from me. <laughs> I am a stranger. I hide not your commandment from me. Do you think, okay, I am a stranger in the earth. Hide not thy commandment from me. What is what does it really mean? Bible is everywhere. Is that not correct? You can walk up to anywhere and buy Bible. Is that not the commandment of God? That was not what David was saying or talking about. You can open the Bible and not say anything. You can be reading it like punch newspaper. Hide not your commandment from me. He's talking about revelation that is for you. <laughs> He's talking about revelation that is for you. What actually changed you is not what you read, is what you see. <laughs> A lot of people open Bible, they didn't see anything. What fear thou? Praise the Lord. So when you recognize the secret place power and you deploy yourself to it, God will begin to unfold some things, mysteries to you. It is natural. God wants to talk to you, but not everywhere. God is not a talkative. And he's such a very disciplined and orderly God. How many of you will want to hold important business meeting with your client and you do it by the roadside? You cannot see the reason why many Christians lack information about their destiny. Expecting God to be talking to you while everybody is there. You don't want to respect the secret place. If you don't have it, there are certain dimensions of your life you will never know anything about. I'm just trying to take extracts from the message I'm preparing for camp. I'm taking just part of it. See, there are dimensions of your life that you will never know, yet you need it. And that is the reason for struggle. He sent a word unto Jacob and he lighted unto Israel. Now, he did, Jacob is an individual. Israel is a nation. Are you following? He sent a word unto Jacob. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 8. And that word leads, shone upon the path of the entire Israel. Through that word, everybody ran with it. And they are still holding on to that word. But a word came to one man. A word came to one man. Praise God. A word came to one man. Revelation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He sent a word unto Jacob and it lighted upon Israel. That word can only be downloaded, can only be received in the secret place. God is not a talkative. My dear sons and daughters, please know this. I'm showing you mysteries of life. There are things about you that God will never announce anywhere. It doesn't matter how many people are here. In fact, let all of the Pope and prophets in the nation gather in this auditorium. There are things God will never tell you here. It is one on one, sir. Because it's a matter of destiny. Are you, and let me say, one thing about side effect of secret places, but do you know that sometimes you will be in God's presence, sometimes I can be in God's presence for 18 years, Sometimes for 10, 11 hours, you have not had anything. It's not all the time, all the 10 hours I pray, pray little, study little, pray little, study, but I will just remain there. It may be like maybe around early hours of the day, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., a word will just come. <laughs> and from that word, I can bring out like 10 different messages. But the truth of the matter is that if you are in a hurry to leave his presence, 
that you lose, you miss it. The reason is that God wants to be sure you mean what you are doing. Not that he didn't see that you have been there four hours ago, five hours ago, ten hours ago. He's not blind. But we have a generation that is always in a hurry, hit and run. That is why we are empty and light. Nothing, no life inside of us. All we have is mouth, talk, talk, talk. How many times have you heard Christians say, I am coming from God's presence? No, they are coming from their friend's house. <laughs> How many times? They are coming from their friend's house. Because they are coming from their friend's house. That is why every little, that, little thing that happens in, in town jolts you. You are always afraid. Why? Because God is far. Don't you see what David said? Holy Spirit. Hear what David said. Is it Psalm 132 now? 132 verse uh, 5. Is this 132 verse 5? Let me fly it for Good. Oh, okay, start from verse number 2. I want to show you something. This is somebody who is hungry for secret place. How is one to the Lord? Okay, no, go to verse 3. Verse 3. Uh -huh. He says, surely. Say, Surely. I will not come into the tabernacle of my house, nor go up into my bed. Surely, this is David. You wonder why God blessed this man so much. David was not just talking, no. David lived what he said to us. I have made up my mind that what we are talking about. I said, my life needs to straighten up. I said, there is something missing about my life. I'm not happy with it. I need to know you. Want. Listen to me. This is not just talking with friends, talking with pastor. I'm talking about you know God one-on-one. -on -one. He needs you in the closet. When last have you shut down your phone and just said, look, five hours before I leave, since today is Saturday. 365 days now in a whole year. Now some people are still struggling to carve out four days for a long with God. 365 days was given to you free of charge. 365 days to extract four days to camp. Shut down everything. Some people are still planning how to be doing business there. Oh, please understand. understand. There is a higher life for you, my dear sons and daughters. There is a higher life for you. One revelation from heaven can terminate your lifetime of struggle. Just one light. Surely I will not come. Go to the next verse, please. Go to the next verse. Let's read the next verse. Everybody read. I will not give sleep to my eye or slumber to my eyelids. Why? Until I find out a place. Say, please. Oh, please. Where can I meet with this, my God? Ah, this place is too noisy. Ah, this place is too noisy. Ah, when visitors come, they will be disturbing. Ah, this place, they are always knocking. Are you catching something? Are you catching something? Until I found out a place for the Lord, an habitation, Liku Saraja, an habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. Look at what he said in Psalm 91, verse 9. Because thou hast made the Lord thy God, who is thy refuge, thy habitation. When you make God your refuge, your secret place, that is what God is looking for. Unfortunately, for years that many of us have been coming to church, we don't even have one. You cannot see the reason why it's difficult for many Christians to know and to hear God. We prefer that people hear God for us. I'm not making sense to somebody. It will amaze you that a lot of people are running with their friends' lives. You don't even know the reason why I ask somebody, buy me a bottle of water across the road. Let's say I am God. Are you listening to me? I call one of my servants because he's always around me. He's the person that hangs around you most. You send on error. Is that not correct? You can see the reason why many, many calls, many people's call are failing. They are never where God can easily see them and call them. Is it not the person that hangs around you that you send on error? Oh, you don't understand what I'm talking about. No. Oh, yeah, you come. Buy me bottle water across the road. All right. My God, my security, angels, everyone, oh yeah, let me follow him. And the moment he dashed out, he's on his room. Move, boop, boop, boop. Friends saw him. They don't even know. Wow, they're going to buy something for this God. And they also begin to copy. 
It was somebody I sent to buy me water. You don't even know why I sent him to buy water. That is his own assignment. Have you waited to receive your own instruction? You cannot see the reason. We see what others are doing and duplicate it and not complain why we are not making it. But that guy is doing something. He's doing well. He has a backing. He is sent with that word. You don't even know. That is the reason for confusion. Many people don't understand the mystery of this life. Soon we are going to stand up to pray. God likes to hide himself. So that when you seek him and you find him, you'll be able to keep whatever he tells you. <laughs> Do you understand? How many of you have bought a brand new television before and they just carry it home for you with that manner, with that nylon, with that carton? Are you hearing me? They say, no worries, brand new. You without it, no matter how sharp, proper it is. Are you, you understand what I'm talking about? You want to feel it. You want to remove the carton. You want to, you see, after the carton, you also open it. You see another nylon from the nylon. You open it. Is that not correct? You see how everything is packaged. Do you know why? Even in the natural, the manufacturer package things. How do you think God is that cheap to be seen just like that? Listen to me, my dear sons and daughters. God is waiting for you in the secret place. There are things he will never tell you. If in the natural will can you imagine if your heart was on your head? Your heart. God in his wisdom kept your eyes heart where nobody can see. Because if your heart was to be on your head, you can imagine what your enemy would do to you. They would just grab it and would bust it. But God kept it because it's a treasure. Can you imagine if women were to be pregnant and carry it on their head? As the baby is developing, everybody is seeing it. Everyone you offended with, you know the way they snatch foam on, from, with Okada. They will just be snatching baby like that. <laughs> but God in his wisdom has a way of keeping it that even for months, some people may not even have an idea that this woman is pregnant. And that baby, even after it's showing, do you know that until it is revealed, you don't name that child? It's a secret place. If God, in His wisdom, can hide pregnancy, He can hide some sensitive part of our life internally. Excuse me, God is far, far more than all of these things. Don't expect Him to be seen just like that. He saves. When it comes to redemption, he saves people. But when it comes to intimacy, meet me in the closet, my baby. <laughs> and listen to me, it takes those who are ready to pay that price. No wonder Jeremiah said, if you seek me, early, early. Some people say maybe very, very early in the morning, maybe around 4 a.m. Well, you can be right. But let me tell you something. Sometimes, hi, when I sat down and meditated, what God actually meant there is that, look, when you are still young, seek God. Because some people, when you get some information at the age of 70, you will weep for yourself. You will weep because God said, ah, I wish you have come when you were 24. This information, you will have been able to run with this life. I wish you have start, you caught this revelation when you are still like 49, 45. This will have helped you. But if I tell you now that look at what you are supposed to do for me, but you have never been here, and I cannot send anybody, you have to hear it yourself. So that it will become a reported speech. The song you are to sing is in the secret place. The next message you are to preach is in the secret place. What I'm preaching to you now, drop from the secret place. Are you hearing me? It's not what you just eat. It if it drops, it's in your spirit. Still, my note, I will still preach it. Do you understand? If you, are, if you are not there, it can't breathe on you. Letter kills, it is the spirit that gives life. The letter killeth, it, it is the spirit that gives life. 
Listen to me. This year's retreat. No wonder God said he's a God of miracles and wonders. He asked me to teach you about the mystery of secret place because we are not seeing anything around your life because there is no deposit in the ground. If you want to know a fruitful tree, maybe it's the seed you see on it. Is that not correct? If what we see happening around you are not good enough, that means nothing has entered into the ground. Oh, you don't understand this? It's this simple. It's simple. Even in the principle of the Almighty God, Jesus had to be planted, died for many Jesuses to manifest. He had to be planted. He had to die. No seed produced trees without first of all dying in the earth. So that is why God calls it. You know the reason why many of us are afraid of secret place? Because we don't want to miss that home video. We love our television too much. God didn't say you should not watch television. But watching it too much is what makes, you a, what makes it a sin to you. Because when it becomes an idol, that it now becomes a thing that controls your fear with God. God is too jealous. He loves you. Do you know what God said about these people of Ezekiel in the, in, 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 about the children of Israel in Ezekiel? Ezekiel 16, verse 8. God sees you as a wife. I married you, but you are messing up with other men. As a result of that, I will deal with you in case you don't know. Ezekiel 16. Let's begin to read from verse 8. Everybody read. Now, when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. In other words, you are now mature for love. God was, this is a proverbial statement to an entire children of God, children of Israel. You know, he said, I look at you and I discover that you are mature for love. But I was looking at you to call you to my closest so that I can have my wife by my side. But look at what God said. He said, he said I spread my skirt over thee and cover thy nakedness. Yea, I swore unto thee and enter into a covenant with thee, said the Lord. And thou becamest mine. That was why I got married to you. Read further, verse 9 and verse 10. He said, Then watch I thee with water. Yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee. And I anointed thee with oil. Prepare you for what? For marriage. For wedding. Verse number 10. I clothed thee with what? With the broidered cloak. And shot thee with badger's skin. And I gathered thee about with fine linen. And I covered thee with silk. Verse 11. I decked thee also with ornament, and I put bracelets upon thy hand, and a chain on thy neck. What God is saying that I decorated you. I give you beauty. I give you honor. I saved you from destruction and disaster. I consider you to be my wife. And any woman that sees her husband comes in first from work, and the man walks up to his room, what do you do? You walk and follow your husband to the bedroom. Unfortunately, many times, children of God romance with strangers out there, and their husband is waiting for them in the room. No relationship in the secret place. Verse number 12, everybody read. And I put a jewel of thy, on thy forehead, and hair in thy hair, and beautiful crown upon thy head. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver, and thy remain of fine linen, and silk and broidered work, that thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil, and thou was exceeding beautiful, and thou didst prosper in the, into a kingdom. And thy renown went forth among the hidden for thy beauty, for it was perfect through my comeliness, which I had put upon thee, said the Lord. Everything that people celebrate in you, God decorate you for himself. Did you hear that? But thou didst trust in thy own beauty. Did you see that? You not carry all your beauty and put it in yourself. You not feel the thing now end time to you. You not feel too big to now come and honor your, your husband. No more time for your I want you to have a res, revelation as if your relation with God as husband and wife. The men in the body of Christ are referred to as priesthood. Is that not correct? The women are referred to as the bride of Christ. Are you hearing me? Now, there is no gender in the things of the spirit. But that is how you just attack it. Now, but thou didst trust in thy own beauty and played who? Played the harlot because of thy renown. 
and pure and pours out thy fornications on everyone that pass by. His, his it was. In other words, you just sell yourself cheap. TV come, you fraternize. Friends come, you fraternize. This one come, you fraternize. Before you know it, you are depleting the closest. Value for personal relationship with God start dying. Hunger for personal relationship with God start dying. He called you to be his wife, but he no longer sees you in the closest. The truth of the matter is that when do you consciously go in to meet him as he went to meet your husband? That is what God is saying to the children of Israel here. I'm no longer seeing you, but I betrothed you. I paid the die right price. I laid down a whole life to die that I may bring you out. Decorate your life with beauty. Is there anything you have asked me that I have not done before now? Now you cannot see the reason why all of these things are disappearing. Because you saw that you are now beautiful. I have a good job now. Pastor, please. Uh, I will not be able to make that prayer meeting. All right. Please bear with me. Praise God. I just got a new land. I, I need to just I have to. I, we just we just got a new house. We just relocated. I will not be able to do it. The distance is too far. It's too long. Uh, it's too far. I can't. I won't be able to come around anymore. Is it not what is happening? And and of thy garment thou didst take and deck thy eye thy high places with diverse colors and play the harlot, play the harlot, play the harlot thereupon. The like things shall not come, neither shall it be so. Listen to me. I will continue from here on Sunday. I want to, I've not even given you the five blessings and the power of the secret place because I don't want to rush it. I want to teach it in depth. Rise on your feet. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Those who recognize the secret place, the first thing they enjoy is brokenness. Lack of prayer life is pride. Not recognizing your weakness to come and table your request before the Lord is pride. Are you listening to me? It is in the secret place, open your eyes and look at me everybody. It is in the secret place you find comfort and rest. You know sometimes it's as if everything is just busting and it's tearing you apart. Are you listening to me? It's in the secret place. In the secret place, you find comfort. Hear what the Bible says. Let us therefore come boldly. Hebrews 4, 16. Let us therefore come what? Come boldly before the throne of grace. Am I making sense to somebody? Let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And find grace to help in time of... Where is he talking about? Let's come boldly before the throne. Say throne. Throne is an altar. Throne is where God Himself sits. And I expect you to have your own personal prayer altar. I taught you September 1st. Now, come before that altar. That is where you can find help. That is where you can find strength. Listen to me. The, what is happening to people, the discomfort, the pressure, the frustration is on the increase. And it is orchestrated from the pit of hell because Satan never wants you to have rest of mind. In your rest of mind is his own failure. Are you hearing me? But your peace of mind, your peace of mind is his own trouble. So I will allow you because every time you are enjoying and you are laughing, Satan's head is busting and picking. And he doesn't, who is that person? Praise God. Hallelujah. So, when he unleashed all the arts of air against your finances, against your business, like he did to Job, but Job was strong and stout. He was able to maintain his cause. He kept on talking to God. He kept on talking to God. He got to a point all the friends of Job became enemy overnight, including his wife. Satan entered her. And what was he saying? Cause God and die. Have you come to that point in your life? Listen to me. Your rescue place is in the secret place. Hear what Jesus said. Matthew 11, verse number 28 and 29. Shall we read with a loud voice? Matthew 11. Come unto me, what? All ye, how many of them? How many people? All ye that labor and are heavy laden. Are you frustrated? Are you full of pain? Are you full of, like, oppression? And you wonder what kind of life is this? He said, come unto me. That is secret place. That is secret place. It's an invitation. Come. 
What will I do? The next verse. Everybody read. Verse 29. Take my yoke upon thee and learn of me. For I am weak, meek, and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your soul. You know, sometimes somebody came and was asking me, my son here, he has traveled now. Uh, he said, Daddy. He said, I don't, I don't know what is the secret of your joy. You're always smiling. Are you hearing me? Praise God. <laughs> I just, I just laugh. Praise the Lord. Somebody said, that laughing pastor. <laughs> Another person came and said, what is this? Are you, do you have problem at all? Everybody look at me. You see me each time I mount the pulpit, the first thing I welcome you with what is my, is my smile. Have you? And the next statement is hallelujah. Is that what correct? How many of you have followed that carefully? Look, if I share with, I told you, if half of what I carry, in fact one quarter of what I carry on my head, drop on you, you will collapse. <laughs> if, if, if I just offload it on you, you will just collapse immediately. Not even till tomorrow. <laughs> Do you know what it means? What this head think every day? Carry every day. But you are smarter than the devil. You smile it away. Are you, yes, are you listening to me? Are you talking about pressure? Are you talking of misunderstanding? Are you talking of misconception? Are you talking of pressure, needs? Are you talking about so many things you carry? What is it that you carry? You're talking about your own immediate family is there. Then you carry the almost, almost every other family. You are supposed to sleep. Somebody called one day. He said they expect me to be to be awake. I said, ah, is it so? Pass it. You are sleeping. <laughs> I was in the office. I was eating. I was in the office. I was eating. Uh, I was eating. Uh, I don't. I drank more, and I was trying to probably take snacks. And one of my sons came. I, Daddy, this is almost the first time I see you eating. Eat, you know? Do you eat? <laughs> Okay, all of you, you two, you are, you are laughing. Doesn't that, doesn't that make somebody to, to laugh? It, shouldn't that make somebody to laugh? Now, that tells you what people think pastor is. Nobody thought this man should rest. Many few, only few believe that this man should rest. In the moment pastor travels, hey, it's not serious. You know, they're not serious. How many workers they don't know? It's going to rest. I imagine I was eating. Somebody said, ah, do you eat? Eat. He ah. says, it's doing me so much. It's doing me so much. That <laughs> Honestly, if I mention the name of the person, you will scream. Ah. I said, it's doing something that I'm eating. <laughs> I said, I do. But not all the time. Not all the day. <laughs> do you understand? I eat. But even though you are angry inside of you, but you have to say, I eat. <laughs> the one that gets to me most is when people send text me that I called you as a son so time and you didn't pick up. Ask what time? 1 30 a.m. 2 a.m. Now, my dear sons and daughters, please understand this is serious. Pray for pastors. You can imagine the strength of man can carry you with that kind of responsibility. The strength of man can carry you. Lift up your voice to heaven and say, God of the secret things. Ah, show up on my behalf. Listen to me. All I just want you to, in the next few minutes, all I just want, the grace to stand in the secret place is the first thing you need to ask. Grace to stand in the secret place. Say, God of the secret place. God of the secret place. 
reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. I don't know how many people have had, open your eyes first. Have you heard of Buddha? Have you heard of Buddha before? You have heard of Buddha? Do you know the story how that man became Buddha? He was just an ordinary man. Are you hearing me? He was just tired of life. He was desperate. He just, he, he said, there must be a spirit that governs this universe. And the man went into research. He said, I don't want to know what spirit is this. I want to see the power that governs the universe. And you know, you know the devil now, very smart. He is not born again. God didn't appear to him. Do you understand? Satan showed up. It was a demon called Buddha that showed up. And he said, from today, his name shall be Buddha. That is the one he's looking for. And that's all. And he did some gimmicks and magics and manifestations. And he believed he has it. That's why they go into abstract. Same. Don't buy. Till today, he spread that strange religion. That Buddha is the name of a demon. Look, in this life, is what you are looking for, you will see. It's what you are looking for, you will see. That is why I said, God says, look unto me and be you saved. Why unto me? Isaiah 45, verse 22. Because there are many distractions. What is happening in your marriage can be fixed if you know the God of the secretness. What is happening in your finances in your business can be fixed if you know the God of the, of the secretness. What is happening to you and what will happen next can be fixed if you know the God of the secretness. Let me tell you something. All of these people you see in great business and they are Christians and they are commanding waves. You wonder why customers keep flocking there. Excuse me, sir. There is something they have encountered in the secretness. In whatever profession you find yourself, effort, energy is limited in this world. One of my sons came to me after I prayed with him about his business. And he says, no, uh, he has the challenge. We pray. I asked him, thank God he said it fast. And I said, good, continue to fast. And I pray with him. Then he called me this afternoon and told me of the breakthrough they've had. They've been looking for that. He has not been able to produce for some weeks. And, the, and he has bills to pay. He has salary to pay. You are not producing. How will you pay? Do you understand? He came to the office, I canceled him, and we prayed. And I released him. He called me this morning. He said, the machine has started working. He doesn't need to work to, you know, to buy another one before. And he was sourcing for money. In fact, it was so bad to a point that the person he wanted to collect money from, he just said, suddenly, the person who has promised him all for the person to disburse money, he died. Do you understand what I'm talking about? There is a, there is a spirit war that controls the affairs of men on earth. Listen to me. Know the God of the secret place and you'll be in charge on earth. Struggling and laboring without God will just make you frustrated. Where I'm going is it? Do you know what I'm on? And I said one of his products was in the market and he has a very good product. And he said one of the customers that normally patronize, who is a Christian, he said your product is good but there is other one that everybody patronizes a lot. Everybody buy more of that, but they want is she wonders why they buy that product and your own that is even good. They don't. He said it's a mystery. So he was asking me, and I was telling him my counseling. I said, Listen to me. Even if that man packaged as critter, as long as he has bowed to a God, he will say. So you better know the God of the secret place. The people you are content. Have you ever seen brilliant student in school? Came out with first class, at the end of the day, he has no job. If you rely on brain alone, it's brilliant, is it? You, you, you are joking. No? You must know the God of the secret place that powers destiny to start. To start up. Lift up your voice to heaven. Say, God of the secret place, release grace on me. That is what I just want you to pray for. First of all, ask, Lord, that God of the secret place, I need grace, 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 I need grace. I need grace. I need grace. Grace, O oh Lord. Grace, O oh Lord. Grace, O oh Lord. Thou God of the secret place. It's your grace I desire. It's your grace I desire. Thou God of the secret place. Grace, 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 grace is what I desire from you. 
in the name of Jesus. Cry for grace, call for grace, call for grace, call for grace. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and call for his grace. Open your mouth and call for his grace in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and call for grace in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and call for grace in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Open your eyes and look at me. If I can get you to locate a secret place, even if it is 30 minutes on a regular basis, I'm not talking of your regular money devotion for everybody in the household. After devotion or before devotion, you have already met with your maker. The God of the secret place. From there, you have controlled the entire work for the day. Are you listening to me? Then you're not sure. It may not really be hours, but start from there. But one thing I know is that whatever you do repeatedly, you will attract that spirit. According to Romans chapter number 6, verse 16. Know ye not to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, the servants of the same you are? Once I yield myself to regular prayer, what naturally comes from me after some weeks and some months is the spirit of prayer. If I yield myself to fasting life, it will come on me naturally because I have relook, I have created an atmosphere in the spirit realm. And when God sees that two weeks, three weeks, you are consistent, you start seeing grace dropping. Grace will start dropping. You see, what many of us need to first of all ask is grace to stand before him. All of those things you are looking for, they are little to compare to what grace will release. Secret place. Secret place. Say, Father, everything that distracts, that's everything that distracts, that will let me seek you. I kill it in the name of Jesus. You better open your mouth and pray. Everything. Are you ready to do that? Some of you, you better pray. Everything that distracts me, from locating my secret place, from settling down in my secret place. Lord, I kill it right now. I kill it right now. See the way you are praying. Are you ready to kill it? Some of you, you can't leave some television program. You better pray. Everything that distracts, everything that distracts, that will let me locate the secret place, that will let me remain in the secret place. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth we see. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth we hear. My heart is calling you. Oh God, my altar is calling you. Oh God, oh speak from the heavens and the earth we see. Amen. Open your eyes and look at me. There are some people they can't stay long in God's presence. Psalm 101, verse number 5 and 6. You wonder why you can't just stay long in God's presence. That thing must leave you today. Whoso privately slander his neighbor, him will I cut off. He that has an eye look and a proud heart will I not suffer. Verse 6, everybody read. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. He said that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. Verse 7. Everyone read verse 7. He that walketh deceit shall not dwell with, within my house. Wait. Shall not dwell within what? But he that dwelleth in the secret place of You know we are talking about concept of the secret place. There are things that are in, in beauty in some people that have crept into some people. They can't stay five minutes in God's presence. There is no agreement. The next verse. He said, he that telleth lies shall not what? Tarry in my side. He that walketh deceit cannot stay. He that tell lies cannot stay. You will leave. You see, some of us, you don't know why some people can't. They say, ah, you finished prayer now, now. They say, I finished prayer. How many minutes? Three minutes. In your own house? He can't stay 
sit there, he's not used to it. I want you to open your mouth and say, Father, whatever repels your presence in my life, whatever repels, whatever is fighting, whatever is fighting against my stay in your presence, let it catch fire and be born to hatches right now. Let it be uprooted and be destroyed. I want the spirit of prayer to fall upon me. Can you quickly lift up your voice? You need to understand this thing must be flushed out. Whatever, whatever won't let me stay in your presence. That which you repair, that which distracts, that which discourages. No, whatever repairs, whatever repairs, whatever repairs, whatever fight with my stay in your presence. Whatever struggle with my spirit that will let me come to the secret place. My father, let it be removed. Let it be uprooted. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be uprooted. Let it be uprooted. In the name of Jesus. Lord, uproot from me everything that discourages, that weakens, that denies me of your awesome presence. In the name of Jesus in Jesus precious name we pray Colossians 2.14 he said blotting out every handwriting and ordinances that were written against us which is contrary blotting out the handwriting of ordinances ordinances has to do with decrease certain vows that the enemy has spoken to your life. Are you hearing me? But mercy will speak for you today. I say mercy will speak for you today. He said blotting out the handwriting of ordinances, handwriting of decree. You can clearly see, read in some people's life, you can read poverty. In some people's life, you can read failure. In some people's life, you can read it, it's visible. Those are the handwriting of ordinances. You know, sometimes you look at some people's life like they say, ah! Blotting out, he said, that was against us. Is it for you? Is this up and for you? It's against you, which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. If Jesus has taken it, why is this defining expression in my life? The God of the secret place wants you there. He can help you take it off. You don't wish this thing away. You don't wish them away. Did you hear me? You don't wish them away. You don't wish them away. You don't confess them away. You fight them off. Are you listening to me? Don't forget I told you yesterday on Tuesday here that listen to me. The devil is the prince of this earth. He is the God of this world. The Bible confirms that even Jesus says so. Now, two things happen. I told you. The moment you want to stick out your neck, Satan will come. He will show up. As long as you are not making waves, as long as you are not ready to rise and do anything and shine, he leaves you. The moment you take a decision for God and you want to rise, he will show up and he will challenge you. Two things. It's either you negotiate with him or you fight him. I'm telling you. I told you a lot of Christians have compromised. That will permit me to begin to show you scriptures. Are you hearing? A lot of Christians have compromised. If nobody rises by accident. Except you give it a fight or you negotiate. <laughs> you negotiate. You negotiate. You negotiate. You negotiate. You negotiate. Praise God. So you will lift up your voice to heaven. Every handwriting. Every handwriting that is not of God. Written. That won't let me find my way to God's presence. Every accusation, accusation, condemnation, by the blood of Jesus, I wipe you off. By the blood of Jesus, I wipe you off. Open your mouth and say, My father, my father. Every accusation, every handwriting, by the blood, every handwriting, every accusation that won't let me stand in the secret place. Lord, wipe it off. 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 Are you sure you are praying? Are you sure you are praying? Are you sure you are praying? In Jesus' precious name, we pray. 
You know, sometimes some of us will probably feel maybe I should start leading you to bind the devil and cast out devils. Listen to me. Satan is happy when you are when your life is soiled, when your life is stained, and you are not aware of it. Because he knows that for life, pray one million prayer, he knows it won't be answered. Because if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord won't hear me. And he knows that his only hand that God wants to see, according to 1 Timothy 2 8, lift up holy hands unto him. As long as that hand is no longer holy, Satan is happy that you are not aware. I will, therefore, that men pray everywhere, lifting up what? Holy hands without wrath and doubting. But before many of us came here, we doubted God. We leave one answer. We leave one answer. I was there last week. I came for prime meeting two weeks ago. I've not even seen any sign. Doubting is already there. Satan will just be passive. He doesn't even want you to know that you are committing a grievous sin against God. Number two, he said, with wrath. How many people did you get angry with before you get here? And yet, you are even yet to reconcile. And here you are praying. Are you catching something? Rot, Ibinu. Without rot, without doubting. He said, lift up your hand. So those are things you take care of. Those are things you take care of. Lift up your voice to heaven and say, Father, every handwriting, every accusation that won't let me stand in your presence by the blood of Jesus, wipe it off. Oh, you have open your mouth and pray. Every and writing, every accusation. I want you to get to a point that standing before God, answer speedily come to your prayer, to your request. Every and writing, every every and writing, every accusation from the pit of hell against my business, against my family, against my home. I blot it out by the blood. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. La baraba kote ye go bana kito rikia saraja ingala ya bada manakoto ningele ya bada bada hinko siti agaya bada. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Psalm 86 verse 5. The word of God says, Our God is plenteous in mercy unto all them that shall call upon him. He says, Plenteous in mercy. He said, For that Lord that art good and ready to forgive, and plenteous in mercy unto all, say all, all them that call upon thee. All them, say all them. You see, the place, the secret place of prayer is the place where we draw mercy. Say mercy. Listen to me, some of us. What our parents have done when we are growing up is terrible. And it's just the mercy of God that has preserved many of us. You know, sometimes you wonder why some people that are not born again are making it. Some of them have done some dangerous giving. And they sow into the life of a, maybe a man of God. And you wonder why things that happen to others is not happening to them. They are supernaturally shielded because that man of God spoke into their life. That as you go from here, because you have honored the grace of God upon my life, no evil of any kind shall befall you. You think you can arm such a person? He is not born again, but mercy is speaking for him. It doesn't mean that if that person dies in his sin, he goes to heaven. No. But while on earth here is divinely illuminated, divinely shielded. Are you catching something? Hallelujah. So, plenty of in mercy. Where there is mercy, you will get away with something that destroys others. Are you listening to me? The pray, tonight's prayer is different from what you used to pray, but I want to just get you to a point. So that when you get home, you walk into your strong room. When I mean strong room, I'm talking about your power, your power house. You are walking there confidently, and you feel a presence that tells you, Welcome, my daughter. Now we can do business together. The reason is that anyone that truly want to do business with God must appreciate and recognize secret place in his life. Hallelujah. Is somebody hearing me? A normal and a right thinking couple, they don't make love in the open. Is that not correct? Do they? I hope you understand what I'm talking about. If God is calling you his wife, he wants to really empower you, want to breathe himself into your life. It has to be in the secret place. We wait on you. 
Come on, begin to pray. The anointing is upon you. Anointing to pray. Anointing to seek God. Anointing to withdraw to the closet. Anointing to begin to know God one on one personally. Yes. 
song every day. Father, near to thee, draw me nearer, nearer to thee. My song every day, Father, near to thee, draw me nearer, nearer to thee. Closer to thee, closer to thee. Lord, draw me closer, closer to thee, closer to thee, closer to thee. Lord, draw me closer. Closer to thee, Lord, my song every day. Father, closer to thee, draw me closer, closer to thee. Allah, by your bada 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 Oh, Zeka Yagadabash. Oh, Le Yagadabash. Ask him to touch you. Ask him to touch you with his call of fire. Ask him to touch you with the call of fire. You will never be cold in prayer again. God is looking for somebody in your family that will stand in the gap. And he will turn things around. My son, every day, Father, near to thee, me near. A spirit of intercession fall upon me. The spirit of prayer fall upon me. In Jesus' precious name. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We appreciate you. Can you stretch for your hands, everybody? I want to pray two prayers. One, as you stretch for this hand, the call of fire will rest upon your hand. The call of fire will rest upon your hand. And you put it upon your heart. What that will do, number one, every worldly desire will be burnt to ashes. Number two, you will be feeling guilty if you have not prayed in a day. This is a prayer I prayed some years ago that has really helped me. That Lord, take me to that end. That I will be restless anywhere I have if I have missed my presence with you. You know that kind of prayer is rare. Stretch for your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, what you laid upon my heart, I've shared with this church of God. And I'm grateful to you for this great number of people you brought for these prayers tonight. I know the fire is ignited already to know you in the secret place. 30 minutes, one hour, if head of families will catch this revelation, housewives will catch this revelation, students will catch this revelation, everyone become insulated in God's presence. We we'll no longer begin to cry the cry that sinners are crying. My father, put fire upon these hands. Put fire upon these hands. That as they put these hands on their hearts, Everything called worldly desire dies. And they come under the 
influence and compulsion of the Holy Ghost to feel guilty if they have not observed the secret place prayer. Let it be Lord. In the name of Jesus. Put that hands on your heart. Say, Father, I enter into a new level with you. To lose appetite for every worldly things and to gain interest in your presence. Increase my passion for you. Can you say it loud and clear? Say, Father, increase my passion for you. Let it be henceforth. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. Say those two prayers with your two mind while your hand is on your heart. That from today, I lose appetite for every worldly things. Things that distract, things that God disgusts. And today, I come under the influence and the directive of the Holy Ghost. That if I have not located a secret place, if I have not met with you in, a, in my secret place in a day, I will have no rest in my heart. Say loud and clear. Say before the whole Lord. If I have not spent minimum of 30 minutes in your presence in a day on my own, one on one with you, I shall have no rest. Are you ready to do that? Say, God of secret place, let your fire burn henceforth in my heart. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now, open your eyes and look at me. You know what the Holy Spirit just said to me? You will see a sign to as many that have prayed that prayer sincerely. The kind of joy, the kind of peace, the kind of peace that you have never experienced before in your life. You can't explain it. It's beyond man. You have, watch out for it. On your way home, in your room, between now and next week, you will see it coming. It will come, go, come and go. That is peace and joy you cannot explain. When you get to that prayer, you see that naturally you take interest in prayer. Naturally. Naturally. You just feel like praying. Whenever you feel like just praying, you are just picking interest. Quickly dry. It's your husband that is calling you. Are you listening to me? I'm telling you from experience. The little I've enjoyed. When you just get excited, or just get excited, you, don't, you can't explain. The joy is just overwhelming. He's calling you. It's time for love. And you know God is a pure God. His own type of blood is like, come on, sit and let's discuss and begin to worship. That time of prayer and worship is a time of romance you have with God. Please understand that. He's calling you. Hallelujah. I'm sure somebody's blessed today. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. And take your seats. Hallelujah. Let Pastor Shego come and bless the offerings for us.
as the offerings and the tithes. Kneel down. Praise the Lord. The boy was calling us and he came with an offering for God. Let's train our children in the way that they should go. When they grow up, they will not depart from it. Hallelujah. Which one? Your mother-in-law. Okay. Because I hope you see that. I know you are. Okay. Everybody stretch forth your hands towards Mrs. Chineye Uwobe and Brother Elvis Uwalaka. 